Send magazines? <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Kickstarter. Before we get into the meat, what have your guys' experience been with the Kickstarter platform? Have you ever crowdfunded anything, Austin? I know you have. So mighty number nine. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that work out? Uh, not well. <laughs> I kickstarted a lot. Bloodstained. I kickstarted Broken Age. I kickstarted. I did the Fig for Psychonauts Two. Oh, really? Kickstarted a okay. couple podcasts. Wait, you can do that? <laughs> you can't. Well, up. Now it's Patreon, but yeah, yeah, now it is Patreon. Chris, you ever kickstart anything? No, mm. I don't support anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do I- yeah. By the way, support uh, Hot Button Podcast. <laughs> well, I know you uh, you funded the Amplitude reboot as well, yes. which I also did, and I did eventually get my backer kit when that game came out. Still waiting. After I yelled at them on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I know that you uh, <laughs> didn't work out for you, did no. it? No, I got the game. Harmonix, if you're listening. Yeah, we're in the game. Yeah, I just didn't get the shirt or the case or whatever i paid for that was like a hundred bones mm. that wasn't, eh. it's whatever <laughs> i'm over it um, <laughs> <laughs> i i think i only kickstarted that maybe one other thing i kickstarted that uh the freeze pop album which still isn't out yet after like three years so not the best recommendations i guess we can give for the company yeah, so no. far <laughs> but i'm still on board with the idea of it anyway i'm sure some people have handled it right bloodstain look cool but that's you know Whenever the hell that comes out. <laughs> um, but today we're, uh, we're here to talk about a project that sure as hell did not go well. This is Hot Button. I am your host, Randall Beatrice, and I am here as always with Austin Blakesley. Yo. And Chris Anatuano. What's up? And this is the Ooya episode. Ooya. I like Ooyah. that name. Is it named Ooyah. after that Ooyah. outline from that 90s Al Pacino movie, Scent of a Woman? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Your cuts are getting a little ooh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the Ouya was a massively funded Android-based micro home console that aimed to turn gamers into developers. Um, it was classic. Cheap. Yeah, you know who's the ever... best at developing games? <laughs> we've the always... people who suck at playing them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've all always wanted, right? Um, it was cheap and affordable. It w- could be easily opened up and modified. It had its own exclusive built-in store, like App Store. Uh, it even supported various media apps right out of the box. Every console was its own dev kit. No pesky licensing fees attached. No pesky closed platforms to deal with. They wanted to break all the barriers down. So why did it fail? <laughs> <laughs> Austin, sum it up in one word. Android. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, so we're going to go through the history of this a little bit. Um, July 3rd, 2012, the Ouya was first announced. The name was chosen from the beginning, first, like, press release, but not much else was really known at the time. Other than that, it was going to be, as Austin said, Android-based, and that it was led by a woman named Julie Ehrman. I think I'm saying that right. I always make sure with my names. Um, uh, She was the CEO of the California-based Boxer 8 Incorporated, which would later become rebranded as Ouya Incorporated. Mm. One week later, as July 10th, an official Kickstarter was launched, complete with an in-depth description and video pitch, and uh, all the info was out. So you guys want to hear the deets of this thing? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Is, this is what the Kickstarter said? This is the Kickstarter said, <laughs> yeah. This is where I got a lot of my uh, information from here. So our, here's the big bullet points come crowdfunding launch day. First is that it was revealed that the console would only cost ninety nine US dollars, so ninety five for you early birds out there. You know, mm. so Ooh, wasn't it also on. like a hundred and twenty or thirty if you got the one that had more memory or something like that? Yeah, I think there were other SKUs, but I don't know if those were on launch day. It was advertised as ninety nine dollars, but they that eventually was the, came yeah. out with one that had sixteen gigs that was more. Was that a different color too? As well, I, don't I think know. they <laughs> there, was a, there was a brown one and a black one and a clear one. Yeah, yeah, it's like the Game Boy Advance. Yeah. <laughs> Except they, that sold a lot. Yeah, and it worked. <laughs> it, worked. And it was fun to play. 
But they, they did have a working prototype with in-progress software and user interface that they, they kind of showed off a little bit. And like there was a video, and the video, the way it was edited is there were some quick cuts of, you know, of kind of concepts of what they wanted everything to look like. It's kind of hard to say that early on, you know, really what that stuff was. But they also showed quite a few shots of their uh, soon-to-be-doomed controller, which uh, I will get to <laughs> later. Um, but yeah, I mean, the the UI certainly seemed intuitive and snappy enough from their video. Yeah. Uh, but most importantly, everything that they were kind of showing seemed believable, which is, like, you probably heard about Kickstarter projects that, like, right off the bat, they're just pitching something that's, like, not real. I wish <laughs> yeah. I had some examples on me, but there's some. There's, there's a billion. There's so many. It's like many. some kid in the Ukraine that's like, I want to build a gaming PC. Can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna do a Twitch from it. And then you're just like, oh, God. <laughs> but it, it it seemed uh, it didn't seem like a scam anyway. But third, most importantly, we're gonna get into the specs here of this thing. Uh, well, what they would say anyway. I think the full stuff wasn't really out there until the actual units sort of made it into people's hands, but the information that they put on their page was that it ran on Android 4.0 and featured an NVIDIA Tegra 3 chip uh, along with 1 gig of DDR3 RAM. Eight gigs. DDR, I used to play yeah. the end of that one. I used to play that in the arcades. Did you play DDR3? <laughs> DDR Max? Uh, eight, uh, eight gigs of internal flash storage, uh, an HDMI connection to sub for support uh, up to 1080p, one USB 2.0 port, one Ethernet port, and last but not least, internal Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. Uh, again, all believable. Sort of fits in with their philosophy that anyone can develop for it and that it's, yeah. you know... Like, it seemed like what $100 would pay for. But here, lastly, and most shockingly, I will say, is that all the games on it were required to have some sort of free-to-play aspect, uh, whether it be, like, a trial or a demo or whatever. This requirement, by the way, that they would later go back on and say, fuck this and remove. But that was their pitch out of the gate. All right, I'm going to dive into the specs a little bit more. Do you know what a Tegra 3 is? You're just trying to make me look stupid on here. Aren't I you? am. Of course we don't. <laughs> it's All not right. hard. So Tegra 3 is a chip. Oh, it's a cart. <laughs> oh, that's the Integra. <laughs> I think. Is that a cart? Tegra 3 is a chip made by NVIDIA, and it uses something called an ARM architecture. For a little exp explanation of what oh, ARM... Oh, the mini cons are like the mini PlayStation, right? Is it rearmed? Is that what they call yes. it? Yes. All right. I'm trying to connect this you to cut, You're cutting ahead so, of me. All right, sorry, okay. sorry. <laughs> uh, so an explanation of what ARM is. There are two types of computer processors, CISC and RISC. CISC is what you're probably familiar with. CISC stands for Complex Instruction Set Computer. This is what the Intel or AMD processor that you put in your fancy gaming PC would be. Mm. Um, this is what X, it runs on x86 architecture, which is 32-bit version of Windows or X64, which is the 64-bit Windows. This is what the PS4 and the Xbox One use. Nice. <clears throat> right. When they switched to X86. The other kind, I said RISC, stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. And uh, it's one that a lot of people don't actually know, but it's one that powers much more things than just gaming PCs, essentially. <laughs> Without getting too into it, because I don't really understand it all that well. <laughs> I'm not an electrical engineer. It uses reduced instruction sets to save power, which reduces the amount of transistors. The two important things to draw from that is that it's easy on batteries, and it, you can make it real small. It was pretty small. Yeah. I forget the actual dimensions. I think I had it written down somewhere, but they, you could fit it in your hand, theoretically. Yeah. Oh, I'm gesturing in a way that uh, nobody could see, but you could hold it in the palm of your hand. Yeah, he's got really tiny hands. <laughs> these, see him. these processors were used in every gaming device, handheld or console, all the way up to the PS4 and Xbox One. Hmm. And this is like a theory RISC. ARM is the architecture that powers most of these just because Google put it in Android. So anything that runs Android runs an ARM architecture and has an ARM processor. Uh -huh. But... A lot of people don't know that ARM is actually very old. It goes, dates back to the 90s. That is old. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here's some devices that are built on the ARM architecture and have ARM processors. The Nokia brick phones that we're all familiar hey. with. The ones that played Snake. Yeah. Uh, every Android phone under the sun, every <laughs> Chromebook under the sun, mm. all Apple products that are mobile, iPhone, iPad, the Apple Watch. A bunch of these at the stage. Every yeah. other wearable, like Samsung watches and Fitbits. And then, so nothing important. And then also, 
in terms of gaming, nuclear missiles. All of these gaming devices use the ARM processor, the 3DO. Remember that thing? <laughs> Man. Uh, the Nokia N Gauge. Multimedia. Yeah. N Gauge QD. <laughs> the Game Boy Advance. The Nintendo DS, the Nintendo 3DS, the Nintendo Switch, Jeez. the PlayStation Vita, the PlayStation TV, the Nvidia Shield, the NES Classic, the SNES Classic, <laughs> and the PlayStation Classic. <laughs> yeah. I jumped the gun. I mean, I feel like our list would be smaller to try and name handhelds that didn't run on that thing. <laughs> the PlayStation Portable. Real? Oh, okay. UMDs, right? The PlayStation Portable used something called a MIPS processor, which okay. was the same processor that was in the PlayStation 1. Oh, strange. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe that's why that could emulate those games yep. so well. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, uh, also, I guess that was the era with the the cell for the PS3, so yeah. Sony was... <laughs> the yeah. cell, also a reduced instruction set computer. Really? Why was yeah. it so hard as to was develop the, for? <laughs> as was the Xbox 360, right. and the Xbox, and the PlayStation 2, and the PlayStation 1, and the N64, and the Nintendo, <laughs> and the Super Nintendo, <laughs> and the all, Dreamcast, and All the, the way back yeah. until the... Uh, um, but... The original Pong cabinet. Also a bunch of shitty educational consoles, like the LeapFrog thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they also yeah. use ARM processors. They look like Nerf-made tablets. The thing I'm getting at here is that, and I'll let you get back to your, your explanation of the history, but the whole thing is that, like, a lot of people shit on the Ouya because it used Android, which is why I made the joke in the beginning that sure. Android was the one. <laughs> um, if they had done the work to make this thing work as, as advertised, I think it could have been successful. Right. But they just basically opened up an, a Nexus 7, the Google tablet. The jailbroken. They, they took it out, <laughs> they made the board a little bit smaller, and they put it in a weird box, and then put an HDMI port on it and took the screen out. Like, that's all the <laughs> They Ouya were very is. proud of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's essentially what the Ouya is, and that's not coming from me. That's coming from the CEO who said in an interview, if yes. you take apart a Nexus 7, it'll look similar to our board. She was she pitching that like a good thing, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that video is incredible. Yeah. Uh, was that South or South by Southwest? South by yes. Southwest. Uh, but yeah, so we we actually mostly just summed up sort of the hot stuff from their initial sort of pitch. We'll get into the actual like philosophy because the the whole like th it's uh, I think it's like a three minute four minute video. It seemed pretty genuine. Like it, it, I, and I'm sure it was, but like the they they talk about how. Um, basically in the video of how difficult and expensive game development has become. This is 2012. Yeah. Uh, and they had clips from a bunch of other like supportive devs echoing the company statements of wanting to give more freedom to the artists, anyone with ideas, regardless of the scale or background or genre, whatever. Hackers unite, no hurdles, uh, send a message with your pledge, blah, blah, blah. They showed footage of Minecraft running on that thing. There were partnerships with Twitch so you could watch league matches. What more do you want? Yeah. <laughs> You um, telling me there was a device that ran Minecraft? Yeah, <laughs> it was. It's pretty wild. Now the I don't two, buy it. <laughs> the two odd things that I noticed in that pitch video that I thought were uh, funny was the emphasis on the controller. Like there is tons of talk of that thing in there, which is strange to me considering if you were making an open platform to use anything, wouldn't you use like I don't know an Xbox controller? Like, why did they want to bundle a controller in there to begin? Like, they were pretty much talking about the importance of that controller, like, so much in that video, but what, I don't, why did they... They wanted to control the entirety of the game experience. Mm. That's also from that interview. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and second, uh, all their talk of how people love gaming on their TVs, but that mobile internals were the future... Which, yeah, I mean, that's the future for, you know, that? like, yeah. So. The, the best YouTube comment I saw on the video of that interview was just, the portability of a console, the power of a mobile device. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which also made a joke earlier about, oh, it's the Switch, but backwards. <laughs> like, they, yeah, they really predicted so wrong. It's great. Because this past generation only proves that people still like big home consoles and PCs. Like... The PS4 selling pretty fucking well, uh, as well as the games. So, which kind of goes against their whole belief that the console market is pushing developers away, which is like kind of how that sort of starts. They're just yeah. like, because they, they want to bring everyone to this platform. But after reading the full campaign statement, 
which was rough in my opinion. They, they were, like, did you read that? It's, it's, there's like really lame references to old games. They're like quoting about like, there's like a joke about your princess being in another castle and it's, it's like eye rolling. It's, yeah, it's, it's really. Um, and then there's these really like these the quotes like, it's time to bring back innovation and air experimentation and creativity to the big screen, which like, fuck you. Like g game developers that, that was around the era. Like that, that stuff was like booming. Like people were making the really was awesome released shit. In the same year as Bioshock Infinite, Last of Us, and GTA Five. <laughs> just for Bad a year bit. for games. <laughs> just, for, just for a little bit of context yeah, on that like one. Like it's just like. What color is Ouya? Because I'm gonna get a color of that hat that says "Make Consoles Great Again." <laughs> <laughs> just like a cube hat. Too. <laughs> it looked like those cheese hats that they wear yeah. in Wisconsin. But it, it all seems like a lot of these quotes come off as pretty tone deaf. They, I have this one quote here. With all of our technological advancements, shouldn't costs be going down? And it's like, no. No. What industry is that true in? <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, like they keep Everything's getting more complicated. Yeah. Everything's getting easier to use. <laughs> Everything's getting harder to make. Why isn't it cheaper? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. The, the, there's so many resources. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, and they keep talking about how gaming could be so much cheaper, like you said, and it's just like, my, I mean, this is pre-VR and 4K entering the gaming space, so it was yeah. hilarious that, like, very shortly after that, the exact opposite happened. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, again, like... Like I'm reading through the, this fucking text, and there's so much of this this talk of this world class controller, which I I really wish we had one here with us right now, so you guys could like feel what it's like. Oh, uh, I felt the controller. You felt that controller? Okay, yeah. so I I played an Ouya. I guess I should have pressed it at the beginning. I played an Ouya at GameStop for about thirty minutes. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it felt like 30 minutes. It might have been more like 15. But uh, instantly, that controller feels bad. Like, I, I really wanted to buy one. It kind of looks like the Steam controller, doesn't it? it? A little bit. Yeah. And, and they were going for some of the same things. But the build quality of it, it feels like... It feels worse than, like, a PDP or Pelican controller. You know, or Mad Cat. Like, it is, it is the... You know how they say, like, this is the Player 1 controller, this is the Player 2 controller? Yeah. This is the Player this 4 This is the controller. Player 4. <laughs> oh, way past 3. <laughs> it's It's... It's, I just wanted to have one sitting on the table, like just to like make us angry as we keep reading through this. But like, because I tried to, um, just a little anecdote here. I tried to, I tried to buy a new yeah, and it's hilarious because if, I, I was talking to Austin about this. The first guy I found someone on Craigslist who was selling one. It was the only one I could find that's cheap because for whatever reason, like when when tech companies like this fumble it, that stuff drops in price first. Yeah. The thing's useless, and then a, a little bit of time goes by, and then it becomes like a novelty, and everyone wants because they stop making them. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So you uh, can't new idea. Let's <laughs> make it really shitty. Fall, the hot button novelty box. <laughs> it's gonna. Yo, we're gonna Soldier promise Boy, a yeah. 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 have to compete with the Soldier Boy content. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gonna. It's gonna be really. Really, we're gonna promise a lot, then we're gonna fail, and then people will pay out to ask for it. I probably, and we'll be every Craigslist listing. So we have to pay. Control, we control the whole market. Yeah, we control the whole market. I told, it's I told, a scam. like, I told Austin I was trying to get one, and I think you said something the lines of like, "How much would I be willing to pay for it?" And it was the one, the guy on Craigslist found was like twenty five bucks, and he ghosted me. That was as far as I was gonna go because I, I that one uh, shop around here had one for fifty, but most of the ones on eBay are like over a hundred bucks. Because everyone's like, have a piece of shitty gaming history on your show. <laughs> uh, but I, I did not get one. So, bummer for everybody. Especially you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, all right. So, we're going to dive into this. Uh, before we go on, we're going to dive into this so-called game pad real quick. They called it um, the Stradivarius of controllers. What does What's that mean? What's a Stradivarius? I don't know. It's a guitar. You want to Google that while I get into I should have. Yeah. That's the quote that they... <laughs> Stradivarius is one of uh, is a type of violin. Violin, <laughs> close mean? enough. It's got strings. <laughs> is it like just like a really good violin? I, I hope so. Built <laughs> by members of the Italian family Stradivari <laughs> during the 17th and 18th centuries, the quality of their this sound has defied attempts to explain or equal it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, what the fuck? So they're not they're not hyping this up at all. Um, no, no, it's they are. They're trying to they're trying to say it's such a good controller, know, nobody will ever be able to make another one. <laughs> yeah, but what like a weird random reference to use? Uh, yeah, like as if people funding that thing would know what the fuck that meant. 
Um, but des- all right, so, so the design for this thing was fronted by a, nam, a man named Yeves Bihar. That sounds right. Okay. okay that's like the Stradivarius of names. <laughs> But he was the designer of the Jambox. You know that Bluetooth speaker people like? Love that thing. Man, any Jambox fans It sounds good. <laughs> okay. I, I don't think he had anything to it do with that It doesn't sound part. good. I was being surprised. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> got me again. I mean, it's designed... Burn, well. Yves. It's designed well, but the internals suck. Does it sound <laughs> oh, like anything yeah. else you might know? I will, yeah. Aesthetically, I like the look of the console. This yeah. controller, though. All right, so yeah, this... It's like the dollar store violin <laughs> of... I don't know, the, that's fir- okay. the, the, the first act. Of- <laughs> so this controller, it essentially featured the same layout as kind of a standard Xbox controller, but the same placement of the joysticks and uh, D-pad anyway. Even the, the face buttons and the color schemes were kind of the same, except instead of the A, B, X, and Y buttons, it read Ooya, I think, on the, the four colored face buttons. Which was a decision made by Reddit. I don't know if you came across I that. I did, because it didn't have any... Sim- or initially, it was just four it, circles. It was four circles that were different colors, and yeah. people were like, hey, dipshits, we're colorblind. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, and then they had like a Reddit poll for what the button should be, and they she said... a Reddit poll. I'm glad that it was like C-U-N-D. Yeah. Or- <laughs> <laughs> no, Reddit, not 4chan poll. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh man. So they decided God. on Ouya, and then they had another poll to decide whether or not the button should go clockwise or counterclockwise. Oh. O U Y A, you know they spin the other way and yeah. like I man I feel like if you handed someone a controller and had them look at the TV and it was like yo hit the U button <laughs> like that, that would take well especially because it shares A and Y but they're in different places than the Xbox so no yeah. the Y is in the same spot as the Xbox the yeah. A is in a oh, different right. spot yeah okay but it's a Nintendo reverse though of yes. yeah and it yeah. still kills me no see that one doesn't bother me Fuck, for some man, reason yeah that one doesn't bother me really either. the A and the B switching no, in places no. or the X because it's the like Nintendo X is like y, yeah. you know it's like something it's like barely a gaming console <laughs> 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 it's like you know it's a toy I mean you like B way. B is back well you know what's uh, what is Chelsea pointed out to me we were watching the PlayStation we were watching stuff on the PlayStation Classic it's your dog right yeah <laughs> and and uh, and she pointed out how like a lot of those old games still have the like if you play like f- or emulate it like if you play Final Fantasy 7 or whatever yeah. it's like the initial l- button layout of the PlayStation was supposed to be that X the cross was back that, all the time yeah. and circles forward. Oh yeah, that forward. kept fucking me up when I was trying to play Metal Gear on the PlayStation Classic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I kept hitting start, and then when it went to new game, it kept going back to the start screen. I was like. <laughs> the fuck is happening? It's like, oh yeah, it's circle. I mean, when you think about it, it actually makes sense, but... No, it yeah, does. It yeah. does, but also, fuck them. But think about it, like, the way you hold a controller, like, who couldn't have had the force light to see that the one that's closest to the bottom would be the most used? <laughs> yeah, I know, used, they should have just switched the positions of them, but... But the only real difference here that they were promoting, and this is, this is hilarious, this is from the video Austin showed me, was that it was going to feature a touchpad in the middle. So does that sound familiar? Uh, ooh. <laughs> well, when a, what, what was the exact exchange in that clip? Oh, yeah. It's, it's she, sw- she goes in this interview, which it's from South by Southwest in 2013, and the interview is by a guy named Joshua Topolsky, if anybody wants to look it up. It's okay. a great interview. He's great in this. Yeah, thing. I love that so guy. So cutthroat. To the but he's, she's like, our controller is very unique, and she goes, it has a touchpad on it. You're not going to find that anywhere else. And the guy just cuts her <laughs> off and goes, um... The PlayStation 4 was just announced, and that has a touchpad on the controller. <laughs> and she just goes, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like, and then that's that the end so of it. Like, what if I just oh, no, imagine no. a PR person backstage being like, oh, shit, fuck, fuck. <laughs> she, she continues because he's like, yeah. And oh, then she's like. It's so awkward. Yeah, but they're not going to make game. They might make game. They might make the game for the Ouya and the PlayStation 4, but I know they're making it for me because I made a deal with them or something like that. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's you're a good like, thing to happen. You're just like, someone... lady, calm down. You're gonna go bankrupt in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, were, there were other quotes in there that I think they, they're like, it's gonna be laser precise and be weighted perfectly to everyone's hands. And, there's and... there's another anecdote in that video where she talks about how one of the designers of the controller went to China to get it like manufactured. <laughs> okay. And somebody else told him that it felt bad or something like that. Yeah. So then he went back to the drawing board and he's like, I need to be able to beat the computer like 85% of the time in Street Fighter in order for this controller to be good or something. And apparently... A game that doesn't use joysticks. Yeah. Well, I I mean the old ones, but... So it worked for that guy? He passed the test? I guess so. Yeah. 
Or... I, he maybe he's just really good at streaming. <laughs> <laughs> but all this sounds fine, right? I mean, I mean, it should be because the controller was also priced at fifty dollars, which was half the price of the console itself, and also the price of. Well, a little bit less than, than an standard, Xbox 360 yeah, or PS4 PS3 controller. controller and the PS4 controller and the Xbox One controller. Yeah. So, not great. But we're actually going to get more into the... I'm not going to let loose on this controller. I'm going to get more into the controller later of like the actual problems with it. They're pretty... There's a lot. But uh, more and more discussions around the open source stuff. I mentioned a little bit of their philosophy earlier. They kind of were very hard on this no roadblocks, no ports, no fees for or licensing from retailers or publishers or whatever, which I guess like, you know, I get it. It sounds noble. I'm not going to read all the support quotes from people within the industry that were toting this because uh, they all read like ads. <laughs> so it's fine. Um, get yourself a new year. <laughs> Essentially. I mean, it's a Kickstarter. I get it. But, you know. But there was also more hacker talk. Uh, they really wanted that demo, that demographic, the, the hacker demo, because you know this is this is what they want. <laughs> what the fuck? I, yeah, that was. There's so much. What talk kind of that demographic is that? <laughs> they want like the you know <laughs> under 400 people on Earth who yeah. are legitimate <laughs> criminal computer scientists. Yeah, the, that's why I do love them slinging that phrase, that word around. The people yeah. whose hobby is getting stuff that costs money for free. Let's get them as a <laughs> customer. They love paying for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they'll want they they'll understand. And there was also, you know, more focus on streaming. Makes sense. On the back of the Ouya, Zero Cool says <laughs> the Ouya <laughs> is real good and Crash stuff. Override. <laughs> <laughs> There's way too many hackers references on the show. Is <laughs> there? Not enough, I say. Uh <laughs> And that, that little silver box would also have a uh, limited edition black metal brother for those special backers at the 140 tier, which may also have, have that boost in space that you were talking about. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, you've got your options. I think that clear one's a dev kit, by the way. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it was. Not. Was it? Okay. Yeah. All right. You ready for your eyes to roll so far in the back of your head that you pass out? Yeah. All right. So the tiers ranged that you could fund this thing, by the way. Uh, they ranged from $10 to 10000 This also included uh, the special LEET tier where you funded $1,337. Eh? Eh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> but a lot of these higher tiers were fucking... T provided terrible incentives, like I, in my opinion, like they were mostly just invites to developer private dinners and meetings, and like uh, the launch party, like it, it, like for like ten grand, like the, the, like they're acting like, I mean, I, I, like I don't even think they pay for your like I don't think they'll fly you there. No, like, no, you have to get there, and then they'll like take you out to dinner. It's a it's a decent with. deal if you're like a developer. Who thinks you have a good idea for a game rich. and wants to make it, and you're buying the Ouya to make games for it? I guess meeting and having dinner with the people that are designing the console could be a good in. It's a lot of gambling Maybe. to take on a Kickstarter console. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, it's not worth it. I'm just saying. I no, think, I, oh, yeah, I think no, I get I what they were going. I love here. the idea of hanging with developers, and, and like, and especially you know the whole thing behind this is that you're going to be one. But I, I just think the money doesn't match up. That's you know. No. Yeah. No, video game developers are not worth ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, by the way, they managed to sell out of all these. So yeah, you know, of the ten grand ones, yeah, thousands of dollars for a meal. Better be the best meal of your life. I don't know. <laughs> People are dumb. Um, but so the campaign launches. Uh, I forget what was that initial date that I had. August eighth. August eighth. Okay. Twenty twelve. Yes. Okay. It was, yeah, it was in 2012. Uh, the word is out there also at this point, too. Game and tech sites are covering it. They are asking for $950,000. August 8th was the end date. Right. Okay, so, yeah, it was 30 days. So it'd be July. Okay. Or I think, yeah, as of August 9th at midnight, uh, they needed to get uh, $950,000, which uh, I will give it to them as a pretty admirable and attainable goal, considering the product, I guess. Yeah. Let's talk about how it did. They hit their goal in eight hours, 950K. Jeez. Yeah. According to Kickstarter, uh, it held the record for best first day performance of any project hosted on the site to date. Jeez. In that first 24 hours, it was said to have had a new backer nearly every six seconds. Uh, so what did they do? The Ouya company, they added more funding levels, of course. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? 
money was still increasing and they wanted to make uh, as many of these as available as they could. So <clears throat> that was seemed like a logical next step. Uh, when all was said and done, fast forward a month later, August 9th, they had raised $8,596,474 with 63,416 backers. Making the Ouya at the time the fifth highest grossing Kickstarter in the website's history, and only one of eight products to hit the million dollar mark. Now I think it's just sitting at a lonely eight. So, you know. But speaking of eights, that's pretty fucking commemorable. Yeah, um, all right, let's give a yeah, golf the, clap for the Golf clap for the Ouya here. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of idiots out there that don't understand how products are made. <laughs> yeah, no, saying, one yeah. idiot every six seconds. <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> I should have said, by the way, that uh, that extra money that they were collecting uh, didn't go into anything. <laughs> they they put out like updates thanking everyone during the funding phase uh, and wrote things like uh, "Tell us what you want the stretch goals to be," but they never actually added any of them. So I don't know, kind of shitty, but whatever. Uh, I guess they used that money to go more into the costs of getting these out there, which we'll find out that they didn't do a good job on that either. <laughs> but these uh, other updates that they were kind of like, they like they were pretty frequent with them for a while. They included a lot of back and forth feedback on various technical topics, the hiring of more new team members, partnerships with other developers such as Square Enix, Namco, Bandai. They wanted um, to bring their products to uh, the app store, yeah. the built-in one. They said it would also include services like OnLive and Vivo for music videos iHeartRadio was in, <laughs> TuneIn was in, XBMC for their media player. Nice. Yeah, I mean, who cares? But it's there. <laughs> I set you up. I know, but I know. But, um, XBMC is cool. Sure, yeah. But How's it's it? also open source, and you can put it on a Raspberry like Pi. <laughs> yeah. How about OnLive? How do you feel about that? OnLive's gar- garbage. <laughs> the hot um, button console, by the way, is just a clear box full of Raspberry <laughs> Pis, by the way. <laughs> Oh, now the facade's gone. They're just duct taped together <laughs> yeah. and not plugged into anything. <laughs> just a bunch of loose ones in a Comes box. with AOL Instant Messenger. <laughs> comes with... Oh, my God. Comes, yeah. <laughs> comes with Vine. Yeah. Yo, it comes with 10 Zune ports. Comes with Grinder. <laughs> What's the app that uh, you can you find other people to smoke weed with? I forget. Weed Maps? <laughs> no, I think that's like a website to find good weed. The point is, <laughs> you're on to something here. <laughs> We need to start a console that has built-in random-ass apps. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so good. It's just preloaded with a bunch of random shit. <laughs> um, around this time also, after they were funded, there were interviews getting out there with Julie, the uh, CEO, that maybe didn't seem like she totally knew what she was doing. Yeah. Uh, we already made a lot of these jokes earlier. You said but emails? I don't know if... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, <laughs> to be honest, I didn't really hear you. <laughs> no, all right, that's fine. They, um, I don't know if, if, if you have any more, if, uh, if you want to elaborate on that more, but I think we already kind of knocked a lot of these. She's talking out of her ass a lot. <laughs> she's, she's, she, uh... Because I felt bad because I watched that thing and I was like, this. she seems like... Kind of like she she's on top of things, and then you're like you're just like no, and then you showed me that thing. Her and I was whole, like, oh crap! Her whole design philosophy is she's like she's like I look around and I see all these people on their tablets playing things like Temple Run and Cut the Root or something. She said Cut the Rope wrong, which <laughs> already pissed me off. But then she's like. She's like, and then I, you know, and then I remember back in the day playing uh, the Nintendo with my sister, and like, she's aim dropping. Why, yeah. why can't we go back to those days? Oh, and the guy's no. like, and, the, and Joshua Topolsky, God bless him, I love this guy. <laughs> He's like, uh, we're in those days. Gaming's doing better than ever. Like the PlayStation Three and the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, and the yeah. Wii all just passed a hundred million units. Like. <laughs> We're doing phenomenal like, yeah. right now. I don't know where where in this market you think you're supposed to fit, <laughs> including like game emulation. Is he's true. like he's like I just like he's like for instance he's like I just got done playing Fallout Three again. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I've put like 200 hours into this game. <laughs> How are you going to provide experiences like that? Because she kept using the word immersion, and he was like, I was right. immersed in Fallout. How is an Android device going to provide yeah. the immersion that something like an Xbox or a PlayStation does? And she's like, we're not after that market. Those devices exist for those people. We're after the you know people. customers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're after the people that, that you know play the games on their mobiles. But mobile games are such a such a <laughs> disposable experience. And like, there's a market out there for people who want to play on the most immersive device in our house, the television. And, <laughs> and like, she just keeps going in circles where she's yeah. just like, mobile gaming yeah. is better, but but consoles are 
good, but like the consoles we have aren't good because they're expensive and it's hard to develop it's like for catching them. A little kid. So I want to make mobile games for a console so that you have the immersion of a console but the budget of a mobile game and you're like that doesn't make any sense and she's like and I want to put the power into everybody's hands and you're like who why <laughs> those 63,000 people the funny the funniest part of all this is that the Ouya launched and you'll get to this but the Ouya launched in 2013 like I said yeah and the Ouya launched a couple of months before the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One did yeah and they and their did, sales took a hit. They had beat them to market. <laughs> no, they took her philosophy and ran with it, and they're doing better than ever. Uh, yeah, like because she was basing this whole thing on like it's so hard for indie devs to get on these consoles, which it was in the Xbox 360 yes, and PS3 yeah. days. And then when the Xbox One and the PS4 I came out, I have that stuff in there. The flood doors opened. Opened, yeah. yeah. And then with Switch, even more. Yeah, yeah. it's her like. <laughs> It's not, she's not a bad person. No, no. But, like, yeah. her whole philosophy is just, like, it's just, like, a kid's, like, what if we had a horse with a horn on its head? And it's, like, a unicorn? And they're, like, no, but I thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's her next Kickstarter project. Yeah. The hoo-ya. Coming by a fucking <laughs> Oh, they also announced another little in, uh, initiative here called the Free the Games Fund. This which, thing is hilarious. It's, this is so good. So March 28th, 2013, the first batch of units start to get sent out. On time. Well, su- supposedly. I was about to give them that, considering most things on these platforms never hit their release marks, ever. Yeah. So when I, f- I heard about these first batches going out, I was like, oh, maybe the, like, they at least... Got that. Uh, but then Austin showed me some sources earlier that state that they definitely did not manage to even do that. So the, the March batch was like early dev kits and like people that paid for it early. Right. Okay. And those people got it on time. It was not until later, which I'm sure you'll get to, when the thing launched. Yeah. And it, it came out in stores and sent out to the people who didn't pay for early. Which pretty batches. shitty. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, I mean, like some backers got their OEAs. Many did not. It went to stores before it went <laughs> yes. to fucking yeah. backers. There Which, was, you, know, <laughs> you want to know what else that happened with? What's that? The Oculus Rift, yeah. right? Yeah, wasn't really? that... Really? Yeah, wasn't that an issue That's with so that as well? Up. Was that the Oculus? I can't remember. I thought remember. it was the Oculus Rift. I remember that being... No, okay, so that wasn't the... Ki- Oculus did have a Kickstarter, and those people got it on time. Okay. What it was, was that you could pre-order the Oculus, and like... Right, I, pre- okay. I pre-ordered yeah. it. And, like, they had so many pre-orders that they kept staggering out the things. So it launched in March, but to me, they're like, they had a you'll, separate get, reserve it, you'll for- get it in May. Like, we ha- we need time to make more units. And I was yeah. like, whatever, yeah. I, I understand that. It's a tech product. There's, you can't make them as fast as you can sell them or whatever. And then the middle of April rolls around, and I see an Oculus Rift sitting in Best Buy. And I'm like, you can make that unit, but you can't make mine till May? And then I yeah. called them up and... Cursed them off and canceled <laughs> it and bought a PlayStation VR that later that year. Yeah, fucking <laughs> eight. That's yeah. so dirty. Yeah, yeah, it's real dirty. Like, because the funny thing I don't is, like, get it. what's the appeal there? You, you're, you've already got money from people. It, like, you go after the, the extra you go after money. the people yeah. who didn't pay okay, you. Okay, all right, yeah. that makes sense. For some reason, I was thinking like you got paid. Like, you're, but no, no, you're gonna it's get paid dirty. More. Yeah, yeah, like it's that's why. What's funny is oh, like March twenty eighth was when those first dev kits went out. It hit shelves months later, June twenty fifth. So if there were people who kickstarted this thing in 2012 who didn't get it by June 25th, 2013, but like there were other people that could just walk into a store and buy Fucking one. Fucking buy it, yeah. Like on the shelves of those retailers that they claim to hate so much. But <clears throat> what's weird is like before everybody's orders were fulfilled, these things were popping up. Like I saw them at not just game exclusive stores, but even like some electronic stores and stuff too. I, mean, yeah. like, I even saw them. I saw one at Radio Shack. I was about time. to say Radio Shack. <laughs> I know that joke writes itself. <laughs> did uh, I want to ask you guys if you ever saw these kind of out there in the wild? Because did, you worked at a GameStop in 2013. Did yeah, you, I saw them. You saw? Did yeah. you get? And the, I saw them at Target in? too. Yeah, yeah. 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 So their their, their partners were. Amazon, GameStop, Target, and Best Buy, where yeah. they're, they're big. I remember seeing I them. swear I saw one at Radio Shack. Yeah, they had them oh, there. okay. But, yeah. like, their retail partners <clears throat> right. were those yeah. four. Okay. Those were the, yeah, big, those def- are the big guys. Yeah. I definitely remember seeing them on Target and bottom shelf. And then yeah. I think we had maybe one or two. Or could you pre-order I worked at a ghetto-ass store. We barely okay. got, yes. like, the good <laughs> shit. Like, Did you ever? I was, I was really hoping you would have a story that you open a box. You're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> that, yeah. that interview that, that we're talking <laughs> that we keep bringing up, because it's so good. That interview yeah. is right before it came out. 
I think South wow, by Southwest that was that was, close, huh? It That's was like rough. right before it came out. Yeah, that re- that interview reads like an early interview. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I thought it was. Yeah. Like, there's a part in the beginning of the interview where she's like, uh, Joshua Topolsky's like, "Hey, raise your hand if you uh, can back this on Kickstarter." And like, he's expecting like everybody's hand to shoot up, right, and like yeah. four people raise their hand. Ooh. And then he asks, he asks her, he's like, "How?" So she talks about the pre-orders at GameStop and Amazon being open, and he goes, "So how many units have you sold?" And she's like, "A lot." And he's like, "Oh Will yeah, Will you give right. me a number?" And she's like, "No." That was a weird. Yeah. yeah, that was strange. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. She was not prepared because it, it seemed like the like like it almost seemed like someone told her that the the questions were going to be screened or something, or she was just that confident. Yeah. Like she was just like ready to fucking drop the yeah, mic, and then, and then some real, dude got real instantly, yeah, and she mm-hmm. didn't know what to do. I I saw them. So fun fact about the Ouya, I saw them on all those stores. I saw them on Amazon. I saw yeah. them in Best like Buy. Like I said, I, they, there was a kiosk at them, GameStop. That I was... saw them in GameStop. I saw them in Target. Target specifically, uh, at one point, put them out front and center in the electronic section, like on the counter where you buy shit. Yeah. At, oh, weird. And I, and they knocked the price down to 50 bucks. And I was like, oh, wow. yo, if this thing goes down to like 20, 30, 30 yeah. I'll buy it. And then, <laughs> and then like I went back like a month later and they were fucking gone. gone. I doubt those stores got many. Mm. Like I remember at Best Buy, I saw like two around mm-hmm. the time that, that that dropped. So do you remember that um, that Free the Games Fund I mentioned before? We're going to yeah, get into this. this. So the Free the Games Fund, not to be confused with the other Game Jam contest thing that they ran for a short time, where it was like, you know, for up and coming guys to pitch their games to the platform. That seemed a little okay. more, they, like people knew how to organize that. Yeah. You know, despite the fact that I feel like that's more of a detriment to your indie game more than anything. They come yeah. to, but uh, no, this is much more stupid. What this basically was is that they made a call out to... And I'm surprised it didn't breach any sort of rules at the time. They made a call out to other gaming projects on Kickstarter that were looking for funding and said, hey, if your game hits the minimum target of 50K, then we will match that money, provided that the game remained an exclusive to the Ouya marketplace for at least six months. Okay. That seems a little manipulative from the, the, <clears throat> it, the it system. It absolutely is, but it's also an insanely easy thing to cheat. Because, like, imagine if somebody, if somebody's like, if you can, like, falsify evidence that you have $10, I'll give you a $10 bill. Yeah. It's like, wouldn't you just do yeah. anything to trick me into, like... Yeah, get, hey, man, let me borrow 10 <clears throat> bucks. I'm gonna go over to this guy. He's gonna give me 10 more bucks, and then I'll split it with you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, like, it's it's it was so strange. Also, you had, like, <laughs> indie developers on Kickstarter had to know a little bit, like... I'm sure the writing was on the wall a bit, but I think this was more for indie, the lowest <laughs> indie. Like, people, yeah. people who are funding projects that have no, That's like, unfair, because that's a really cool deal for a low-level totally. indie company to get, like, totally totally fucked by exactly yeah because like what happened like suspicions got raised almost uh, instantly when the first two projects to reach this goal were revealed to have a small amount of backers but that were pledging really high amounts isn't it through kickstarter it's just like they don't charge you immediately no yeah until the project's funded exactly so like say you were funding a project wouldn't you just tell your friends to be like yo go fund five grand i know you don't have it but it's fine you're not going to get charged yeah then they're going to pay it so when they found out, they're like, yo, the, these two projects hit 50K. And then they would look it up and they're like, um, you only had a couple backers. Who are these people? And where did this money come from? Because when they investigated those profiles, it was discovered that most of them never, not only never backed a project before, but it was also like a lot of the names were duplicates with avatars of celebrities. <laughs> like they were just gag accounts. Boom. Oh, this is what Uyab meant when they said they wanted the hackers <laughs> to come. To the console. <laughs> <They were> like, <laughs> but this is my favorite story. Fucking one of the profile names of someone who funded was somebody from a missing persons case. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Not to assume anything, but I doubt anybody ran away to fund a New York game unless they got kidnapped and forced to do so. Yeah, buy fucking New York. <laughs> the only way. So uh, word was pretty much out that people were artificially inflating their own projects in order to receive the extra money from Ouya. 
something that obviously violates the site's terms of service. But nonetheless, the company rejected any suspicion regarding the backing of these projects and providing those fun the funding anyway. They were really desperate to get games on that platform. There's another moment in that interview that Austin keeps bringing up where someone was like, what's the uh, the key game for your platform that's going to bring people there? You know, like every time a new console comes out, they're like, what's the killer app, right? Like in the original Xbox, you had Halo. Like that was the thing that brought yeah. people. So they were like, they were like, what's your killer app? And she like, didn't have one and then at one point like looks off screen to like get a name of a title from somebody i don't remember the game that she said in it uh, it was like Hulu. it was like stalag <laughs> stalag fight or stalag something fight or something but it was like clearly like wasn't like ready for which the ouya had a killer app it did and i'll bring yeah. that up later yeah. too which is funny that, that's why i was kind of shocked that she didn't bring that up in there a killer app by the way that was funded as a part of this whole was the game i did thing. not know that was part of that same yeah. fund okay i have a when you get to that i have a list of games that were funded through this system that were Ouya exclusive that for a while actually successful? that are now very popular on steam and other places okay cuz yes. i i have a list uh, here of some failures Okay, <laughs> <laughs> But here are some examples of how this turned out for some of these games. The first game that hit its funding target was a game called Elementary, My Dear, and it was suspended by Kickstarter for subsistence activity. Nice. So, didn't get very far. There was another football game that was funded by them, but then it was they were threatened uh, litigation as they had no official rights to the NFL branding because it's held by EA. So, yeah. that game didn't come out either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that's pretty funny. Hey, this is my game. It's called Google. It's a search engine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a parody of John Madden's football, but it would just be like another person. Like, Jan Bladen Split Ball. Jerry Rice's 50 yard line smash. <laughs> um, but everything basically exploded when a third project uh, named Dunge Dungeons the Eye of Draconis, which is like the most video game as video game name, <laughs> caused controversy by openly stating that a rich relative of one of the developers provided a substantial amount of the cash just so they would fit the 50k mark and have it qualify for the extra money from the fund. And, like, they were shameless about it. They're like, hey, you didn't say we couldn't do it this way. No. And then Ouya, this time, fought back and said no, and they removed the entire thing from the site. If you got a rich uncle, just get him to pay for the whole thing. Why you got to scam companies? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it's true. But the response to this after, like, this, this, this whole initiative was not good. A lot of people thought the rules were fucked, which they were. Most yeah. uh, so much that one developer, I think her name was Sophie Holden, removed her game Rose in Time from the Ouya marketplace in protest. This was after the console was you know already kind of like going, and um, the other devs threatened to do the same with her. So a bunch of people were going to pull their games from the store if they didn't stop with this fun. It was only after this that the company changed the policies in the, uh, the like this movement to add a dollar per backer limit. So I don't know if the games we were mentioning like were. They were probably after they changed these rules. But her game, uh, Rose in Time, went back on the store. New games qualified under the new rules. And they even changed it so they would allow exclusive, the exclusivity deal to allow re releases on PC, Mac, and Linux as long as they stayed off the other consoles. Yeah. And this is very important. Competing with. The staying off of mobile but being allowed to be on PC, Mac, and Linux is very important because yeah. that's where a lot of the games I have listed came from. Okay. Which is funny because they, I'm sure they found much greater success once they were off the oh, yeah. platform. Good for them. Smart move. Yeah, absolutely. Now that we finished that uh, little segment up, I think it's time we talk a little bit about the actual reception of this thing. Before we start, how do you guys think it did? How do you guys think it reviewed? Well, considering that there's an Ouya in every home from here to Japan, <laughs> probably very well, right? Yeah. What she says in that interview, by the way, she's like, I want an Ouya on every entertainment center in the... Oof. Uh, reception, here's what I remember. It has a garbage controller yes, with so squishy triggers that stick all the time, buttons that stick under the stupid face plates, <laughs> yeah. face plates that you have to remove in order to get to the batteries to change them. Uh, it's it like has, changing a game in the end game. It has controller syncing issues. Yes. I remember and, and input lag. I remember that there was a workaround since it used Bluetooth and had a USB port on it. You could technically plug a PS3 controller into it through USB, and it would sync that as an Ouya controller. So a lot of people 
ended up using PS3 controllers instead of oh, okay because I, I know That's they funny. said you could plug an Xbox controller into that USB but and use it but not a, most of the games didn't support that feature no so like it, it's, um, they had no social features whatsoever no yeah. online for multiplayer the online no was also fucked out of the box for yeah a lot no of friends list no leaderboards <laughs> of any kind yeah. there's a very famous mobile no achievements game. yeah no achievements there's a very famous mobile game called Cannibal. I don't know if you guys have ever played this. Was that the one that was Angry Birds before Angry nope. Birds? That was uh, Cannon Brawl or something. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. remember. But uh, uh, crush, crush the, the castle. Crush the castle. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Newgrounds. <laughs> yeah, but um, so there's there's a game called Cannibal where you're a little guy running on rooftops and you have to jump over boxes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was on. It was like one of the first mobile games that kind of hit it big. And it was one of the first games on Ouya. But people bought it and they're like. The fucking the whole thing is an, it's an endless runner. You have to get as far as you possibly can. The Ouya version didn't have leaderboards. So what was the point? What's the point? And, and like, <laughs> Catapult was before you had to like pay money to upgrade your character right, so yeah. you can run faster and stuff. It was all about like wow. getting further and getting on the leaderboards. So you and the Ouya version didn't have leaderboards. No, dude, you take a also, picture, then you post it on the Ouya and then, Twitter, and and then uh, and then <laughs> also and the Wi-Fi chip in it was apparently garbage and would disconnect constantly and had yeah, trouble maintaining a connection. And the store well, was... It must be the same one on my Xbox One, because... Yeah. <laughs> and the store was, was full of... Flooded. With garbage. With garbage. Yeah. Oh, that, you think Steam Market There was, there was like, apps like the, you know, like the fireplaces. It's just a fireplace. Like, <laughs> rain, where it's just a screen with rain falling on yeah, it. Yeah, like, one that's just, uh, what is it, Bikini Ladies? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, guys. <laughs> I think we might need to get a new yacht. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad. That, that a lot of that is post release. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about pre release first, because out of the gate, in between the ending of the funding and you know to launch, there were some praises. A lot, of, many people were still pretty skeptical. There were many that didn't even think that they could deliver the product at all. Yeah. PC Magazine ran an article by uh, Sasha Sagan titled, Why Kickstarter's Ouya Looks Like a Scam. Just not only critical of the console, but also crowdfunding things in, like this in general. It's actually a really great read. It's just a little lengthy, but the title is pretty to the point. Yeah. The summary is pretty much just kind of like, hey, concepts can be super cool, but actually building a reliable thing that like requires way more than just good ideas and intentions. Yeah. Uh, they bring up supply chain management, mass hardware, QA, other major company negotiations, which is part of why what we mentioned about the library you not being great and the controller being shit. There's a like, reason there's three consoles. Yes, yeah. You know what I mean? There is. And yeah, you can't just make your own and say put this one on of the shelf. made by a 200 year old company <laughs> and the other two are made by tech conglomerates. Tech yeah, conglomerates. Exactly. You know what I mean? yeah. Like, totally. They bring up Pebble in the interview a couple of times. Which is very interesting yeah. because Pebble and, uh, and Ouya met similar fates. Fates. And we'll, we can get to that a little bit later when yeah. you talk about the fate of the Ouya, but <laughs> Pebble is actually a very good comparison to the Ouya because they were both things that were kickstarted with a bunch of money and people were like, this is such a good idea. Yeah. And then they just... I remember they just that blowing up. it, and then uh, yeah, yeah. There were some defenders though. Still during this funding process, Unreliability Magazine basically did some diving of their own and said that flat out calling it a scam was a little bit of a stretch here, since a scam implies some sort of intentionally illegal or deceitful action. When it seemed more I like say it's a scam. No, just it seemed like I've a heard, legitimate business venture. It just seemed like they but, sucked at it. Yeah. Considering who they were partnering with, it just seemed like they were bad at it. I uh, I also found an article from Eurogamer. Eurogamer. Okay. Digital Foundry, famous for yes. doing tech dives on yeah. video games. and Famous for telling me to turn my ad block off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but also, they're the ones that, like, do that. They're like, you should play this on the PlayStation 4 Pro because it runs better on there, and here's the reasons why. Yeah. They did a deep tech dive before the... When the Ouya was announced, when this, the specs were announced, but the thing wasn't out there yet. Okay. They basically just Did ran. they build their own or just try to No, <laughs> they, they got a bunch yeah. of equivalent Android devices, including the Nexus 7, Seven. and okay. tried to run them with different games and be like, hey, this is what the performance of the Ouya is going to be like. And I think the closing thing of that paragraph is like, they're going to have to do some magic oh, to God. make this I, thing the, competitive. One of the first footages of a game running on that thing that I saw, because you'd think most of it is indie games, pixel side-scrollers or whatever. Yeah. I saw Dirt. It had Dirt Rally on that thing. Mm -hmm. And... 
it ran Wasn't bad. Was it a 360 game? Yeah, yeah, and it's a good looking game. Like, the, you know, like it's like I, I think it was a mobile version. Oh, uh, was it? Okay. I am sure they had to break it down a little bit here. Um, and Gadget, uh, they praised the low cost of the device and the ease of hacking it. The Verge uh, felt similarly about the openness of the platform, saying it had potential. However, both of them absolutely hated that controller. Uh, and as Austin put it, all these issues were like basically made games unplayable. Like even yeah. like the input lag was so bad. There's videos out there you can watch of people who are like hitting the A button to make a character jump, and it would be like a second off. Sorry, I think you mean the O button. <laughs> Fuck, man. No, that's this one on the PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Continue. Uh, <laughs> um, but they also said that the UI and the launch lineup were also basically shit. Like, you know, that, that like their, their final word at the end of this uh, was the Ouya isn't a viable gaming platform or a good console or even a nice TV interface. So there it's you have It's funny. It. Kind of a man without a country, this console right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it up now. I don't know. You're going to get into it later, I know. But there's the one game, the kill, the, the Ouya's killer app yes. was Towerfall. Towerfall. Have you ever played Towerfall? It's fun. No. It sounds familiar. It's like it, an arena. It, it was like the, it was kind game. of the birth of like the... Yeah. arena combat like the now two, you see a lot of them the 2d four player combat games like samurai gun or they're all over the place yeah now, like but. it's just like four you just sit with four people on a on like in on the couch and you just like duke it out on a shared screen yeah okay very and dumbed it, down like we're not dumbed down but very like um it, it, like picture like a smash brothers except like they were always based around very snappy and quick and simple mechanics yeah oh like, okay yeah okay yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah towerfall was the one where you had a bow and arrow and it had you had five yeah. arrows for it it was a one hit kill on everything nice. it was a power like you had like each player had three lives and, it's a very good game yeah but i remember a lot of the <laughs> early reviews of the ouya was just like tower falls good that everything was, yeah. else isn't but that tower was, falls yeah. good <laughs> like the polygon review the, the one i remember watching specifically when the ouya came out because i was interested in it was just like Towerfall's good, but maybe wait till Towerfall comes out for another platform. And then I did, and I bought it on PS4, and it's a phenomenal game. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. All right, so now let's get into these opinions uh, post launch, which, you know, well, we talked about a little bit already with some of the issues that people had here. So, out of the gate, lukewarm. Not as awful as you would expect it to be. It kind of took people like a week or so to realize this thing is shit. But um, I'm, I'm exaggerating, maybe like a month. But that first co- sort of like initial response wasn't the worst. Huh. That's actually surprises me. Yeah. Funny anecdote. I found a video of a guy. So before the game came out in retail, they released it to, like you said, they released it to people who paid for early access. But there was still like an NDA on it. Like the, you weren't allowed to post a review of it. Oh, wow. I found a guy who posted an early review of the Ouya because somebody bought the early backer edition and then sold it to Goodwill. And this guy found the early <laughs> the backer Goodwill. edition. He found the early backer edition at a Goodwill before the ge- the thing came out to retail. Oh my <laughs> so god! He, so he didn't that's sign any NDA because he didn't back it on Kickstarter. <laughs> so he just posted an early review. Wow, well, that's such great. a great way to get around that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but also, somebody sold it to Goodwill before <laughs> it fucking came out. <laughs> That's in so his good. video, he's like, somebody played this thing for like five minutes yeah. because there's no way it came out like two weeks ago and I yeah, already so had one. Speak, I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the funny thing. is The only reason that these reviews weren't total shit is because they were improvements over what they played before. Yeah. Like, like, the funny thing is it's like Engadget came back to say that the issues with the controller got better, but that's only because they were coming from a, like the bottom like you know like they yeah. they said that the ui had been cleaned and sped up a little bit they felt more optimistic about the future of it you know especially because they were like they were engaging back and forth with the fans so much at this point the, the ouya company so like they kept saying like we're taking customer feedback seriously and say and, and shit like that so like they thought that like oh maybe they'll turn it around this is the age of like companies being able to do that yeah other people were less friendly. Digital Trends said it was fine. They said like they said it was built with love. It looks sleek and cool. But these praises were also heavily countered with the question of power and performance, stating it was only about on the level as current smartphones, and that it could never compete with the big three console makers out there, as you guys yeah. already and mentioned then, before. And uh, then, surely a few years later, Nintendo would release that little. I know, and totally <laughs> eat their just, lunch. Yeah. <laughs> but like, like they, they had to rely on a pretty niche platform almost exclusively instead. You know, while everybody else is gaming on 
everything else. See, here's the one thing I don't get. Like, okay, I do get the appeal. Like, yeah. a cheap console for a home. It's not a console. It's just like something like it's like a it's like a gimmick. It reminded me of those leapfrog things, but for slightly older kids. It's like a Chromebook. But like, to play if they're games. but they're like trying to get this hacker market. Any sensible person with a computer is going <laughs> to emulate any of those fucking games yeah. of the oh, nostalgia totally. I mean, yeah. era yeah. or play them on a computer way before. If you buying, can hack yeah. an Ouya, you can build a Raspberry Pi and run it for way cheaper. Yeah. yeah. You can get a Raspberry Pi for like twenty five bucks. Yeah. You can get any Bluetooth controller for less than that. Yeah. Boom. That's half the and price. Your control, you already right know your controller is better. I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 That being said, most other sources here brought up some pretty serious faults, especially as time started to go by. But then again, this is also twenty thirteen. Like you know, hindsight. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Has a lot yeah. Because it. it's like if people are waiting for the like because that's like it's funny that like the connectivity issues that Austin were talking about apparently like they were so rough at launch that like. People weren't even. Some people were not even able to get online at all. And this is like after the thing has been out for yeah. you know like yeah, the, its first a, month. There's a video of Mega sixty four pissing on the Ouya. <laughs> yeah, that video. Is- <laughs> you know, Mega sixty four's review of the Ouya. He goes, "I can't get online, and if Ouya doesn't provide me a fix in the next week, I will film myself pissing on the Ouya." And, just <laughs> and then a week later, he, no, a week later he uploaded a video of an Ouya in a toilet and him peeing on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's because the because we mentioned you know those the that's pretty small already library of titles were mostly just flooded with like that trash like there were yeah. wallpapers like or crappy mobile knockoffs trash. exactly because there was no curation of that store at all like you know like unlike what you would see on the consoles the games themselves a lot of the times people put them side by f- side and they'd work better on a phone than the actual console itself problems like this were making it. We're, we're getting out there into the ether. Like, the bad word of mouth actually started to spread at this point, yeah. and so much that it, it started to affect the most important thing, which is sales. So I know she said she wouldn't say how many... They weren't focused know. on sales anyway from the <laughs> beginning, so... But we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit of numbers here. I was going to say how well do you... Th- or I was going to ask how well do you think you, like, you guys think this did on store shelves, but it's pretty obvious. It is hard to say exactly, because they're, you know... Who knows Companies how many don't people bought them from Goodwill? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, who knows? That could have been half their market. <laughs> but Marcus analyst, uh, the NPD group, um, they described the Ouya sales as, quote, relatively light without giving any more specific stats. However, a good way to see how this thing was actually doing was by talking to the developers who did release titles on their store front platform because they could get numbers of like how well their game was selling. Yeah. And reports of those, fucking bad. Yeah, like, you could probably figure out some sort of average. Yeah, in April of 2014, this thing's out for almost a year. Developer Matt Thorson, who uh, he he made Towerfall, that game that we're talking about, he stated that that game, which was Ouya's most popular title at the time, yeah. sold 7,000 copies. Holy shit. The top selling game on their entire fucking store was a measly 7,000 copies. Now, so into consideration that a lot of this shit is free probably or just whatever so yeah. what they sold 10,000 I, 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 I mean 12, like they, I mean they had those they like they had the backers I assume so at the, this point got their kits but like okay so altogether under 100,000 because you said there were 65,000 so, yeah. backers absolutely there's got to be a small percentage of them that didn't get it plus like 10 12 yeah yeah sales. it's it's yeah, it's it's, it's almost good. unbelievable. When I heard that their top selling game sold seven thousand, that more means that a lot of the people who backed it didn't use it. Yeah, you know, it's like you hear that. Like the funny thing about the Wii is that the Wii sold a lot, but most of the games on the Wii did not sell because no. like people played Wii Sports and they yeah. were good. You know, like every like I know I was years. Years. <laughs> so, like, it, it didn't have a good... Um, the funny thing is, like, I think between the, the PS3, the 360, and the Wii, the, technically the 360 sold the least by a very small margin. Yeah. But those games sold the best. Oh, yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. 360 games sold consistently better than PS3 across and Wii the games board, across probably, the yeah. board. And, and they also, you know, made more on a lot of other things that this didn't have, like subscriptions or uh, accessories or anything, really. It's so strange, because PlayStation's such a big console... But like, I don't you know. You mean literally? Or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's just always strange to me. When I worked at GameStop, I noticed it. M- way more 360 games than yeah, PS3 totally. games are sold. And now it's, you know, now it's like it's it's switched a little bit where like PS4 games are usually like the highest selling versions. But like, yeah. it's, it's funny that like. Well, PS4 is just immaculate. But you, but you could, it, it's great. But like you could have like a, 
a hundred thousand, uh, like and seven percent of people are buying the big game. I mean, I don't know how much Towerfall was, fifteen, twenty dollars, but that's rough. Yeah. I feel bad for that. Well, developer. there's also also yeah, PS4 is, PS4 more, is literally my favorite Sony product. Yeah, like, they probably f- put out. sold a lot more computer too. Towerfall was part of the that's true, yeah free the games initiative or whatever. Yeah. So it was exclusive to Ouya for a little over six months actually. I think yeah, it, was it like hung around nine I months think for longer. Uh, I think it came out with the Ouya's launch in July of 2013. In I think April of 2014, Towerfall came out for PS4 and PC. How did it do when it hit those? Um, and that was when that was when he announced that it sold 7,000 copies on Ouya. Mm-hmm. And a month after it came out, <laughs> it had sold 7,000 copies on Ouya, and I think somewhere like 35,000. Between PS4 and PC, okay, in a month, <laughs> in a month, and that's yeah. after it was out. I know you have yeah. Years. So like, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's. I mean, at least like, at least he wasn't like stuck on that platform forever. No, no, no. Been bad. That's also saying, that's a good deal. Yeah. Now's a good time to bring up some other games that I found. Yeah, yeah, yeah. part of that fun. Um, Towerfall, obviously. As we've talked about, Duck Game was exclusive to the Ouya. Was that really? I did not know it existed till it came out I on PC. I didn't either. And I love uh, that game. Yeah, but that game's great. That was an Ouya exclusive for a little while. A game called Never Ending Nightmares. I don't know if you've ever played I have. that. I've never played it, but I know of it. Yeah. That was an Ouya exclusive. Huh. Broken Age was Ouya exclusive. Fucking get out of here. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, but that was kickstarted to be on like... It was kickstarted to be on PC, but because they adjusted the rules so that you, uh, just, you, couldn't put, you just couldn't put it on okay. mobile or consoles, it was it came out on Ouya That and thing's PC. on everything now, isn't it? Yeah. It's on Switch. And That Dragon Cancer, also. Another Kickstarter game mm. that was part of this program. Your favorite. That came out on... Uh, uh, that game... I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's kind of crazy. I actually didn't know. I didn't know. I know um, like Killing Floor was a Ouya. Really? Think, exclusive game. The first one. Yeah. No. Yeah, wasn't it? It was a special version of Killing Floor. Oh, okay. 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 It was a top-down, like, look kind of like Diablo, like isometric version of Killing Floor. It was oh, specifically weird. made for Did that ever come out mobile. off the platform? As I don't know. Yeah. But it didn't funny. look good. But, um, <laughs> all right, so a couple months go by. Oh, do you? <laughs> Despite these initial reviews, things are like, eh, like, you know, like they're, they're staying afloat. But they're, you know, they're, they're still trucking. They keep on trucking. In October of that year, Julie Ehrman says that she wants to release a new iteration of the Uya. This one with a better controller, double the storage space, better built-in Wi-Fi. This version of the Uya. The ooh yeah. The ooh yeah. <laughs> the Duffman cons. <laughs> so this would be released on um, January 31st, 2014. So, hey, I guess kudos to them for managing to get that out there. They even didn't even with like, those less than stellar sales. That was like six that months after the, the thing came out, too. Yeah. They already iterated on it. All right, we've got another idea. We're going to make it slightly bigger. We're going to make a better controller. They're gonna make it, and they just keep we're going. Gonna, we're going to call it console. the Xbox 360. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a PS4 with an Ouya sticker, sticker on, on the top. Yeah. <laughs> All the buttons, there's little like stickers over the buttons to make the X triangle. And, yeah. Wait a second. And square, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, and then you, pick, you pick it up, and it's a PS4 controller with stickers on it. You're like, it still feels like shit. How do they do that? <laughs> Um, but, uh, we're going to skip ahead a little bit here. This thing is just kind of floating along, you know, the, I'm going to jump to April of 2015. The boxes are out there. Players and developers are losing more and more interest in keeping up with this thing. Uh, the updates from the Ouya company continue to sort of stagger a little bit. Yeah. The Xbox One and PS4 are now both hitting their stride while doing a pretty great fucking job of enticing those indie developers <laughs> that they said would never work with them to work with them. PS4 especially, and Microsoft has their ID at Xbox program. You know, the Switch, you know, it, it like this wasn't announced at this point, but like I think even the Vita at this point was probably still doing better for indie <laughs> games than the, the Ouya ever did. Steam's doing its thing. Smartphones are now more common than ever. You yeah. know, like, it, it's just, like, people can't seem to find a reason to be drawn to this Wonder why. Device. Yeah. <laughs> it is the definition of just reading everything wrong. So this is around the time of our, in our story that it, it starts to show. News started to break that Ouya Incorporated was trying to sell the company because it failed to renegotiate its debt. So not looking so good for them. And this uh, all after an earlier in the year investment of $10 million from uh, Alibaba? Alib- Alibaba. Alibaba. Alibaba, the Chinese holding group. Yeah. Right? yeah. To hopefully incorporate some of their tech into the hardware too. 
And by their tech, they mean tiny microchips so they can steal all so our trade spy on us. <laughs> yeah. uh, I believe at this point they, that they did finally start to communicate with backers on the future of the company as well as the unit itself. But you can only read that information if you're an official backer, which I'm not because I'm smart. And I value where to put what little money I have into, you know. <laughs> like, you know, when I buy recycled game keys for hatred. <laughs> 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 I truly well, listen. I backed a lot of stupid stuff on Kickstarter, but not even this, I'm, I'm not that stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Money number nine is one thing. Um, didn't you, wait? Didn't you also uh, fund uh, ukulele? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Phil did too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What a <laughs> shitty game. <laughs> yeah. I tried to find a lot of these posts. Like, I, I'm sure that they're probably out there on Reddit or something. But whatever. I'm sure you can guess what they say. But yeah, I I I couldn't locate them. Uh, a couple of months later, it was July 27th of that same year, 2015, it was announced that Razor Inc. had officially acquired Uyo's employees and content library and that the hardware was now completely discontinued. You could not get them anymore. This is probably when the price suddenly went from $20 back up to like 100 again. <laughs> The owners were encouraged via statement to then migrate to Razer's own micro console, Forge, I think they call the it. Forge TV. Forge, that's what it's yeah, the Forge TV. Since all of Ouya's games would be integrated into the Forge ecosystem and that the actual Ouya brand would live on as a standalone gaming publisher for Android TV as well as other Android based TV consoles. This was all on the same day that poor Julie Ehrman would step down as uh, Ouya CEO. So she's Ooh. out of there. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped there for a second. I was like, I shouldn't make this decision. And then I said, Yeah, no, the fact that it, you sounded so, like, <laughs> <laughs> defeated when you did it just made it better. <laughs> so the rest of their technical team at this point, like their developer relations personnel, would join the software team for Razer. Well, that gaming platform, that Forge TV, that was discontinued in 2016. <laughs> Nice. Thus ending what was kind of left of the dying Ouya, while those signature titles like Towerfall and uh, some of the other ones we mentioned before, Duck Game and stuff like that, trucked on to find new life on other, much more successful platforms. So at least there's a little bit of a happy ending for those devs, but otherwise... Wait, you this meant console, they're working with Steam? Well, anywhere. <laughs> like, Not a happy yeah. ending for those devs. <laughs> but, um, no, no, they're working with Sony. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Ouya hit its end of the road and then kind of faded into obscurity because it's funny, like, whenever I, the Ouya happens to come up to anyone now, it's always like this, like, huh, uh, oh, and then, like, like, what was that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, it's, it's like, like, it, it didn't even fail in a way that was spectacular to a, a fun degree. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, nobody's going to have the nostalgia for it as they will some of those bad consoles of like like people like, like the 3DO that you mentioned. <laughs> well no I think that's pretty forgotten but I mean it's like I think like even people I think there's even a percentage of people that might feel some sort of ironic nostalgia for like the virtual boy but not like this yeah this is just forgotten I got some thoughts okay on where this all went wrong kinda so the problem with the Ouya was that like I said it was essentially just an Android phone without the screen uh, and and it couldn't make calls or text people. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and and I think they were selling this thing on the hope that people wanted to make Android games for the TV, but I'm not even sure. Like their pitch was so weird, weird that yeah. I don't understand what they were going for, and I think nobody, even including them, did. Did and yeah. There was really nothing to sell it on. They wanted to act like they were flipping the industry on its head, but they didn't put in any of the work to make that a yeah. reality. Yeah. It's like she said in that interview, the board wasn't special. Anybody could do it. And a lot of people did. <laughs> After the Ouya came out, like Chinese companies started, started cranking out Ouya clones oh, yeah. like now, crazy. There's, there's like, those consoles are like, it, it was not a original idea. Their vision of putting the power in the hands of indie developers was fucking the exact philosophy of the PS4 and Xbox One, which came out a couple months later and, and buried they did it the right. Ouya. Yeah. yeah, and they yeah. did it right. Like, And probably had been working on those concepts for... Years, oh, totally. Before that, yeah, prior, they were building you know up those I mean? relationships. It's not like, like they Xbox, saw the Ouya, yeah, went, like, like Xbox since the arcade, like the XBLA yeah. stuff yeah. launched. You know, like it. Yeah, there are plenty of games that can run on Android, including like all the old GTAs and a bunch of other stuff. Fortnite. And all Android devices have controller support now. A yeah. lot of companies like Steel Series totally. and stuff make 
Bluetooth controllers you can buy. It's gotten so much better. Like yeah. that stuff is universal. They, you know? and, they were, and and there's a bunch of set top boxes now, like Roku's and and Amazon oh, makes yeah. one and Apple makes one. Like yeah. totally. They they pivoted in the wrong direction. And like, those have games they, on those They were ahead too. of their time there. They just didn't know what they were doing. Like yeah. you said, they read the room so wrong and went in the complete opposite direction. Damn. And the issue, the issue wasn't necessarily the device so much as just the philosophy. The CEO, Julie Ehrman, it was one of those people that thinks indie development is the future. Uh, she complained about the cost of AAA games and the fact that they weren't taking risks because taking risk was hard when you're spending $100 million to make a game. Yeah. And again, she wasn't wrong. That's not wrong, no. But Putting yeah. the power to create into everybody's hands is not the way to solve that. <laughs> no. no. You, you're not going to like... Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo are doing a bang-up job of getting indie yeah, games on their platforms absolutely. that are dope, but they have teams of hundreds of people oh, who do, whose, to make those entire, negotiations. Who, yeah. whose entire job is to go out there and discover okay, indie okay. games and bring them to their platform. Yeah, um, You can't just let anyone create a game, because then you end up with a few tower falls and heaps of trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You, and, and then that stuff gets buried, too. I'm yeah. sure there was a lot of people that couldn't even find the, the legitimate Xbox games. Live store and too, there's also right? an there are, and on the PlayStation, like, it's, it, like you, that problem is still an issue, especially on like mobile stores like yeah. iPhone and something, but it, it's just like, they're trying, it's, but yeah, they definitely... They just they fucking did it wrong. They yeah. even even for the apps like they never got like a Netflix on that thing. Like no, you know, it's no. like our Hulu. And, and, if they and, wanted everybody to have one box, yeah. In if the it was a room, Roku that could also play games, that might have been a neat pitch. Yeah, but they yeah. never leaned into either yeah. side hard enough. Yeah, no. like and that fucking control. Yeah, and I'll end with this in the in the in the interview that we keep bringing up. There's one anecdote that I left out because I think it's a perfect way to end this whole thing. It is. It is. Julie Ehrman compares AAA development and indie development to the television industry, saying you that, hear the word television a whole lot. Yeah, saying that indie devs are like cable, and AAA developers are like network TV. Cable allows brilliant ideas like Breaking Bad and Game yeah. of Thrones and Boardwalk Empire to flourish, and network TV is where you get shitty sitcoms that are. Meant to feed the masses because yeah. they need big bang. Yeah, they need Damn to man. appeal to the widest audience possible. Yeah. But uh, you know, if she wants to use that analogy, fine. But then the Ouya was essentially just the public access channel. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but it's. Uh, I was gonna say NPR, but like NPR is no, doing NPR's all right. Good. Yeah, yeah, NPR is good. NPR's good. No, yeah. it's, it's that, definitely public access. Yeah. But, <laughs> but that is uh, Ooh yeah, world uh, <laughs> party time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that is our Ooh yeah episode. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I think that'll do it for today. They should have got one. Al Pacino. To honestly, back to my deep cut from the beginning. <laughs> He would have been a great fucking... Just have blind Al Pacino walk in. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe they, they should have just ran this thing like a Tim and Eric bit, like a Cinco product or whatever. They tried. Yeah. The ads for this thing were nuts. <laughs> Ugh. But I think that's it for today. Yeah, yeah that's a great Thank story, you, everybody. Guys. Yeah, I think that, uh, that, that was a fun one to sort of look into just because, like, even though they failed at what they're doing... Get it, in general, this story is still kind of like, hey, gaming is still doing better. Like the the victory here is is yeah. games and players. <laughs> like it's just like that. This is the end of their story, but everything else got better. Mm-hmm. But uh, you wanna you wanna do some plugs there, cowboy? Yeah, yeah, Cow yeah. Poke. Um, I'm playing a lot of check- Red Dead. So. <laughs> Fuck you. <yeah. laughs> um, yeah, check us out on Hot Button Cast. That's iTunes. Um, it's Grinder. That's uh, Fortnite. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Roblox. Uh, the Ooya store. <laughs> no, yeah. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that's good stuff. Hot button cast. And then if you guys want to plug your personal humkers eye something. I'm restart Randy. Austin Blakesley. Yeah. And uh, take care. Go play a better just go game on anything else but this. <laughs> go buy an Ouya. Let's bring this thing back. Yeah. yeah. Someone send us one. <laughs> oh, also send us your mobile phones and we'll load them up with our own apps and then mail them back to you. <laughs> you can email me and hop button. Just cast. put a bunch of broken phones oh. in a trash bag and sell that for $100. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We out. We out. <laughs>